This is an explained plan for a subquery. It reveals poor performance, indicating that this is a slow query. That's why query optimization is so important. Today's topic is what is query optimization in DBMS? In this video, I will cover a few key aspects you need to consider when optimizing your SQL queries. So let's get started. To identify slow running queries, you need to know how to pinpoint them. In Oracle database, there are several methods, but the easiest way is by using the v$sql dynamic performance view. This view contains performance statistics for all SQL statements in the shared you can query it to identify long running query. This query displays the elapsed time, which is the total time in microseconds that your query took to execute. This includes both CPU time and the time spent waiting for resources like I.O. Next, it shows the CPU time, which is the actual CPU time in microseconds consumed by the SQL statement. Following that is buffer gets, which represents the number of logical reads performed. A logical read means Oracle accessed a block from memory either directly or after reading it from disk. We then have execution, which is the total number of time the SQL statement has been executed. Finally, disk reads indicate the number of physical disk reads performed by the query. This shows how often Oracle had to fetch data from the disk because it wasn't available in the memory. We use the WHERE clause to filter the data and display only those SQL statements with an elapsed time greater than one second. The result set is sorted in descending order by elapsed time. So queries with the longer execution times appear at the top, allowing you to quickly identify the slowest running SQL statements. An explained plan is crucial for query performance. It provides a detailed roadmap of how Oracle SQL Optimizer intend to execute a SQL query. It shows how the database will access tables, join tables, and perform operation to retrieve the requested data. Let's learn how to generate an explained plan in Oracle database and then see how to read it. To generate an execution plan in Oracle database, write execution plan for followed by the query for which you want to create an execution plan. For example, select asterisk from EMP. Once executed, the explained plan will be generated. To view the plan, execute the following select statement. Let's run it. Here is our explained plan. Now let's learn how to read execution plan. Before we begin, a big thanks to our sponsor Odin School. They offer a range of IT courses to jumpstart your career with their data science course preparing you for both data science and data analysis roles. The next cohort starts on 28th September, so don't miss out. Odin School provides live doubt clarification sessions, not just theory, complete practical real-time projects, and over 60 practice and aptitude tests. You will also have live instructor-led classes on weekends. Their 360-degree placement assistant gives you access to a dedicated job application portal with 100 plus job opportunities at top companies like Google, TCS, Capgem, Accenture, and Tech Mahindra. Plus, they offer career services including aptitude tests, interpersonal skills training, communication workshops, mock interviews, and resume building. Now for payment options. Option number one, pay 75,000 rupees plus GST, but take advantage of their early bird offer for 10,000 rupees discount. Reserve your seat with just 5,000 plus GST with an EMI plan to 3 to 12 months. Option number two, Odin School is so confident in placing you that they offer a pay on success option. 40,000 rupees plus GST upfront and you pay the balance only after you secure a job. If you're interested, just fill in your detail and request a call back. It's shown on the screen now. Check out the link in the description to reserve your spot. Now, let's get back to the tutorial. Generating an explained plan is straightforward, but understanding how to read it is crucial. Let's explore that. The first operation with an ID of zero is the parent operation that generates the output. In this case, it's a select statement, indicating that we are retrieving data from a table. That table's name, which is listed in the third column, is EMP. The operation with IDs 1 and 2 are child operations that exist due to the parent operation. The operation with ID 1 shows that the parent operation accesses a table using an index. 
When scanning the index, the compiler retrieves row IDs. The keyword by index row ID indicates that the table was accessed using row ID obtained from the index. The final keyword patched means that the row IDs obtained from the index were grouped to reduce I.O. operations. Now let's examine the child operation with ID2. The type of scanning performed on the index was range scan on the index named index underscore EMP underscore ID. This information is reflected in the first and second columns. Moving to the third column labeled rows, it shows the number of rows fetched or affected by the operations. Here, it indicates that only one row was fetched or collected as a result of the operation. The next column, bytes, shows the estimated size of the data in bytes processed or returned by each step of the query execution. This value will vary depending on the filter conditions applied in your query or if you specify column names instead of using select a string. The most important column is cost. The column displays a unitless arbitrary value assigned by the optimizer. It doesn't have specific units like seconds or miles. A lower cost indicates better query performance, while a higher cost suggests poorer performance. Our goal is to reduce this number as much as possible. Next to this number in brackets is the percentage of CPU consumed by the operation. Finally, the time column indicates how long the query is expected to take to perform the operation. That's how you read an execution plan. These are two key aspects you need to learn to measure performance. Next, let's discuss what you can do to improve query performance. Everyone advises against using select a string. Instead, select only the columns you need to reduce data transfer and processing overhead. Let's understand why avoiding select a string is recommended. Here, we are generating an execution plan for a simple select a string statement on the EMP table. Let's review the result. Here is the execution plan. Focus on the bytes column. As shown, the total number of bytes accessed by this query is 28 million. This is significant in terms of query performance, indicating that a large amount of data is being read from or returned to disk. This results in a high number of I.O. operations. When a query processes a lot of data, it typically leads to increased I.O. operations, which can affect overall performance. Large bytes values can cause increased disk I.O., higher memory usage and potentially slow query performance. Now, let's see what happens if we replace select a string with select first underscore name only. Let's generate the explain plan. Here is our explain plan. Focus on the bytes column. This time, the value is 7821k, which is around 7.8 million bytes. By changing select a string to select first underscore name, we reduce the byte from 28 million to 7.8 million a reduction of about 71.5%. We can bring this value down even further. Using WHERE clauses to filter records earlier reduces the dataset and improves performance. Let's see how this works by comparing execution plans. Here we are generating an execution plan for a query that selects the first name of employee's name with an employee underscore ID of 999,999 only. Here is the execution plan. We can see that not only has bytes value decreased, but the cost has also gone down, improving query performance. So filter the dataset wherever possible. Similarly, use having to filter aggregate results rather than applying filters afterward. What the distinct keyword does, it takes all values of a column and returns only the unique ones by removing duplicates. This means it reduces the size of the dataset, which should theoretically improve query performance. So why might it be advised to avoid using the distinct keyword? Before answering this question, let's examine the impact of using the distinct keyword on our query in the execution plan. Will it improve performance or decrease it? Here is the execution plan for a query before using the distinct keyword. Focus on the cost column, which currently shows a value of 1341, and the bytes column, which is 7.8 million. 
Now let's add the distinct column and see how it impacts query performance. Here is the execution plan after using the distinct keyword. The query cost has increased to 1392, while the bytes value has decreased from 7.8 million to 5520. Although the bytes values has reduced, the increase in cost suggests that query performance has decreased rather than improved. But why did this happen? You are right that the distinct keyword is used to eliminate duplicate rows and return only unique values. On the surface, it seems like it would reduce the dataset size and thus improve performance. However, in practice, using distinct can sometimes increase query costs due to several vectors, such as sorting and aggregation. To remove duplicates, the database often needs to sort the data or use a hash operation. Sorting can be expensive, especially with large datasets as it requires additional processing and can lead to increased I.O. operations. Increased memory usage The process of sorting or hashing to remove duplicates can consume significant memory, which might cause increased resource usage and affect overall performance. Complexity of execution plan The query optimizer might choose a more complex execution plan when distinct is used as it needs to ensure that duplicates are properly removed. This could involve additional operations like sorting or joining. Nested subqueries, while powerful and useful in certain scenarios, can often lead to performance issues and inefficiencies. For example, in some cases, the inner subqueries are executed multiple times, which can lead to significant performance overhead. This is especially problematic if the inner query is complex or involves large data set. Also, nested subqueries can make it harder for the query optimizer to create an efficient execution plan. Complex nested structure might prevent the optimizer from utilizing indexes effectively or from choosing the best join strategy. You should rather use joins and common table expressions. What can be achieved with nested subqueries can also be achieved using joins. Joins are generally more efficient and can lead to simpler and more performant query. Whereas CTEs can make complex queries more readable and maintainable, offering a way to break down complex logics into simpler parts. Cross joins, also known as Cartesian joins, can be very powerful but also potentially problematic if not used carefully. A cross join produces the Cartesian product of two tables. This means every row from the first table is combined with the every row from the second table. If the tables are large, this can lead to a very large result set. The size of the result set can grow exponentially with the size of the input tables, leading to significant performance issues. Therefore, they are often avoided in typical relational database operations due to the risk of creating large unwidely result sets and consuming excessive resources. In this video, I have not touched the topic of indexes because I have already explained indexes and demonstrated how they impact query performance in my previous video. You can watch that link on your screen as well as in the description. That's it for this video. I will see you soon with another video on query performance soon. Thanks for watching. This is Manish from rebellionrider.com.